to all the rights and privileges of human beings. They're entitled to human dignity and they're entitled to work to the full. especially a rich society like ours, to provide the opportunities for them. How are you today? Good morning, good morning. We'll work and we'll play. Let's see, who is this going to be about? Watch me now. On Lake and Daniel. Daniel. You must. What does that say? What does that say? Is Janet a horse? No. Come on up here, Janet. Come on up here. Just stand over here and read that. No. No. Watch. What does this say now? Is Janet a horse? No, Janet is a little girl. She's treated um, now like um, a little girl. But she's a child you can talk to and you can get a response from and it's a response that you can understand because we deal with words and most of our communication takes place with words and not with, with um, grunts and groans and, and trying to guess what it is about this child. She's able to come up to you and tell you, I want a drink of water, or, oh, I have sore, or, you know, like you saw her doing in there today. It's a very different kind of thing. Two and a half years ago, when we began the enrichment program, Janet was not toilet trained, she didn't dress herself, she fed herself, but very sloppily. But most important, she did not speak. She had no way of communicating with people other than by means of oh, grunts, groans, um, meaningless sounds and gestures. All of these means of communi communication being very poor as well as frustrating and discouraging for both child and adult. But now she can talk and can interact in a meaningful manner both with other children and with adults. Like the rest of the patients in the hospital, mongoids are quite retarded. Most of the patients here at Sonoma State Hospital have an IQ below 50. Before coming to Sonoma, I had heard the term mongoloid idiot, and I had been told that a mongoloid child was a vegetable who spent his entire life in bed. Actually, this rarely occurs. Mongoloids are among the most active patients in the hospital. They usually range in IQ between 20 and 50 and our 10 children happen to be a pretty representative sample of the mongoloid population. Like the other nine children, Janet was admitted to the project as an infant. The original purpose was to study the growth and development of mongoloid children. Mongolism occurs about once in every 650 births. There are many theories as to its cause, but there is no proven explanation for it. Before the advent of antibiotics, mongoids often died at an early age of diseases such as pneumonia. But now it is not unusual for them to live well into middle age. There are some uh, 3,300 patients at Sonoma State Hospital. And it was our hope that by learning more about the children in the program, we might be able to help other patients in the hospital. Normally, children this retarded are housed in large open wards. This situation can be argued against from obvious humanitarian considerations. But what most people don't realize is that this situation can be reasoned against from an economic standpoint. Because enough funds are not available to promote more complete early development, the child becomes an ever-increasing burden 
and needs a more expensive level of care for the remainder of his life. We've got anywhere from 70 to 120 children on one ward. Uh, this enormous size in of itself is detrimental to the children. You can imagine yourself trying to live under the same roof with a hundred other human beings. The staff on the wards are dedicated people and uh, do the best they can under the circumstances. Uh, but the physical buildings are are so inappropriate to the raising of children. As you go through most of the regular wards, you'll hear a lot of noise. But it's usually just that, noise. Very few of the children talk, and those that do usually don't make much sense. Because of the child's inability to speak, he becomes frustrated in his attempts to make his wants known. As a result, he may withdraw, and this sets in motion the cycle of the environment further retarding the retarded. We felt that this didn't have to be the case. Um, for many years, it was generally thought that the IQ or measured intelligence was a stable thing that was relatively unaffected by the environment or by a person's everyday experiences. But over the past couple of decades, it has become increasingly clear that the environment a child experiences can stimulate or retard his intellectual functioning. Uh, Dr. Nancy Bailey, who has served as the principal investigator for this project, has been one of the leaders of this school of thought which questions the rigidity of the IQ. Uh, we wanted to help the children to become more capable of coping with their world, and with Dr. Bailey's support and encouragement, we developed a program which we believed would accomplish this. We have placed top priority on the increasing of the children's capacities and the increasing of their intellect, you might say. And we have chosen to use language as the means of doing this because it has seemed to us that giving a child language is the way to get there. Oh. Do you remember this? Watch. In the beginning, it was difficult to keep their attention, and things like games, songs, finger plays provided situations which were interesting for the children and which could be used as a means to teach them to talk. Charlene Alton, our language development specialist, played an important role in the development of this program. Okay, Jenny, let's look at this. As the kids began to use words, Charlene taught the staff yes. methods of no, no, no. improving the children's pronunciation. The bubble goes this way. This is a bubble, isn't it? There's the bubble. Oh. Uh, what sound is that? Dada. That's right. It's the dada sound. Okay, what sound does it make? Good. 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 One. Okay, let's say some words. Let's say dog. Dog. Okay, look here. When, when it happens, when she can say it in isolation and not in words, then you go back and pick up, you know, the noise. As time passed, we became increasingly yeah, concerned to see that the children begin to use sentences. And so we devised activities which required them to do this. Where do you want it? Oh. Like a hat. Okay, let's put it like a hat. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Jenna. Mm -hmm. Okay. Glenn, it's your turn. Come over here and tell me what color scarf do you want. Turn around and tell me what color scarf do you want. How do you want to wear it? How do you want to wear it, Glenn? Like a girl. Like a girl, okay. Yeah.
There you go. We have tried to provide the children with a, a variety of experiences. Uh, Reva Metzger, their teacher at the hospital school, has made it possible for them to learn what it was like to use ordinary kitchen utensils. All along, we have tried to develop activities that encourage the children's use of language and that relate to their own experiences. Brad's going to be the teacher now. Everyone listen to Brad. also been important that we make the activities as interesting as possible. places and see them behave much like normal children. It was so great to be able to hear a child ask for a napkin rather than to have to try to interpret meaningless sounds and gestures. It was so great to have a child who cared about whether or not he used a napkin. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Over the first six months of the program, the progress that they made far exceeded our expectations. Um, during this period of time, their mental growth rate actually exceeded that of normal children. The children enjoy the classroom activities. They enjoy learning. They're eager to learn, and as a result, their IQs have risen. Janet's IQ has gone up 18 points. When we first started the enrichment program, designed to teach them to talk, uh, from the very start, we paired uh, their own names with, let's say, pictures of themselves. And it pretty quickly became apparent that they were that they were at least recognizing these names in the absence of pictures. And we went on from there, and it became fairly quickly apparent to us that they were going to be able to read. And uh, um, there were many individuals who um, felt differently, let's say, who did not believe these children capable of learning such a skill. And uh, if they were capable, um, so what of it? Uh, it was, um, uh, with a child this retarded, it was a waste of time. Uh, but they are reading now an uh, average of uh, nearly 200 words. And this is with just a little over a year's worth of work on reading. And reading is only one part of the program. We view it as a natural extension of, of the language of talking. Say here. Here. Here, here, Reba here, Metzger has here. made a significant contribution to the development of the reading program, and her skill in, in devising activities which make clear to the children the meaning of the words they are being taught to read is especially important. Here, ah. here, there, 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 here. Yeah. Way over there, yeah. way, way over there. Look at that. Where's the horn? Where's the horn? Where's the horn? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the top? Don't touch. Where's the top? Okay. Where's the top? No touching. Say, yes, say, here it is. Here it is. Okay, where's the truck? No, where's the truck? What do you say? What do you say? Here it is. Good girl. Use the word here. Here. Okay. Who's that? Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Okay. What does that say? Shh. Oh, give me. Give me. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now let's read this page. Okay. Go to uh, the farm. They go to the farm. Very good. What's that? Cow. Do you see a cow in there? No. No, I think that's the farm. Okay, let's read. 
The next page. Big is a cup. All right, I want you to look at this word again, though. They, they, see, they see a cow. Very good. There's the cow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read this page. Two. Is. Whoops. They. See. Very good. A horse. They see a horse. Good. Get okay, good. Okay, thank you. The. Is. Whoops. What's the word? The see? Very good. A big barn. They see a big barn. That's right. The cow thing. No. She. The man. No. The cow in the barn. In the, the man, cow gives milk, see the man milk the cow yeah. in the what? Barn. Barn. Good girl. Cow barn. Cow in the barn. He. Oh. No, look at it again. <laughs> well, that's the Sammy Snake sound, yes, but it's at the end of the word. Look he. at it really close. No. He. No. No. It is. Good girl. The. No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The milk good, cow. Is the milk good? Yes, the milk is good. Thank you, cow, for giving me milk. Very good. As a research program thus far, we have only scratched the surface in terms of learning how capable and self-sufficient these children can become. Over the past two and a half years, we've seen them change from cute but obviously severely retarded children into children who are, though still retarded, so much more capable, so much more like vibrant, growing, developing boys and girls. Janet is a human being. Janet is a little girl. But there's so much more work to be done.